Welcome everybody to our webinar on measuring your organization's security preparedness and maturity score. Today our speaker is Bikash Barai, who is the co-founder of Fire Compass, a B2B platform for cybersecurity strategy and buying. Earlier he founded IVIS, an IDG ventures-backed company, which was later acquired by Sigital. He has done his double B.Tech and master's from Indian Institute of Technology, IIT, in computer science, as well as architecture. He's passionate about AI cognitive hacking and attack simulation. He's credited for several innovations in the domain of IT security and has multiple patents in US PTO under his name. He has received recognition from UC Berkeley, Intel, NASCOM, Red Herring, Thai, Fortune 40 under 40 India, and many more. He actively pursues painting and magic and has spoken at various forums like University of California, Berkeley, NASCOM, DSCI, CISO Platform, NUS Singapore, Thai, TEDx, IAM, TEDx, RSA Conference USA, etc. If you have any questions for the speaker, kindly drop in your questions in the question box in your webinar control panel. The speaker will address them from time to time or at the end of the session. Thank you, Bikash, for joining us. Over to you. Thank you, Pritha. Um, welcome, everybody, for our uh, Power Webinar Series, the 20-minute webinar series. Uh, this is going to be fast and furious. That's the idea. We may not go very deep, but the idea is to uh, talk about some of the interesting topics in the industry. And we'll come up with a few more uh, webinars in the series um, across uh, various different uh, folk, uh, various different uh, areas in cybersecurity. Today, the topic is about measuring or assessing cybersecurity maturity. And uh, cybersecurity is probably one of the most uh, elusive fields uh, across all the various domains, uh, technology domains. Um, it's a game which is not totally understood for a very long time. For a very long time, uh, the industry had been trying to protect. And after uh, several decades, we realized that we have not been able to protect. Now, today, response and recovery is one of the very big focus area. So we have been going through this evolution in terms of understanding of cybersecurity as a domain. And measuring cybersecurity had been something which the industry had been trying for quite some time. Um, but until now, uh, even today, we do not have an established model and a, a framework or a specific uh, score which the entire industry acknowledges as here is the score for my cybersecurity. So today, what we are going to talk about is we'll talk about some of the models and frameworks to measure cybersecurity maturity and preparedness. After that, we are going to talk about how you can um, do this in your own organization. And a little bit later, we will also show you some sample, uh, some sample reports which can give you some idea on how if you want to conduct a cybersecurity maturity exercise by yourself, uh, how could you use those ideas in your own organization? So that is going to be the high level structure of today's presentation. So I'm not going to talk about what a maturity model is. I believe all of you are aware of what a maturity model is and how you can use a maturity model to identify your gaps, how you can use that to build roadmaps, etc. cetera. Uh, my focus is going to be more of talking about some of the a few of the maturity models today so here's a list of certain other maturity models which are there uh, you can use nist csf uh, they have certain maturity levels use nist csf and kind of uh, apply it in the context of measuring maturity there is cobit uh, there is isf there is uh, wasp sam which is used for 
measuring application security maturity etc so there are a lot of various different maturity models and frameworks there's none which has emerged as a winner or widely accepted everybody has got their own strengths and weaknesses but today gradually the industry is moving towards standardization and with all these massive breaches etc today the board wants to know how is the maturity of or maturity or cyber security preparedness today if you want to get a cyber risk insurance they need to decide the premium and as a result of that they need to have an idea of what the maturity of an organization is and they need a number because their premium is going to be determined based on the risk factors so there are many different drivers uh, which is uh, causing the industry to uh, move more towards measuring maturity have a, a single score which is um, accepted across the industry etc so here is an example of using NIST cybersecurity framework so this specific model um is used by intel so intel released a document on this on the left hand side you can see the five different functions or uh, which uh, five different uh, aspects of nist csf uh, which are identification as a capability protection as a capability detection respond and recovery so these are the five critical capabilities and within those there are the sub factors and here is a kind of high level heat map which tells you that when you map your organization's network security from the perspective of identification as a capability or the perspective of protection so how does the score look like in each of these aspects so it's a fairly comprehensive and a um, and a uh, fairly big uh, Excel spreadsheet which you will have to use to build this uh, but it's a very interesting model if you want to uh, look deep into it you can just search for Intel use case for NIST CSF you will find it um, they have done a great job in putting together uh, how they use NIST CSF in measuring their cyber security so this is one model secondly OWASP has come up with a, a model to measure the maturity of your application security program. And a lot of organizations spend heavily or focus heavily on testing, conducting penetration tests, etc. But then there are many other aspects. Penetration testing is possibly one out of 100 activities that you can do when it comes to application security. What WASP SAM has done is, WASP SAM has broken down this around 80 activities into 12 groups. And these 12 groups are strategy and metrics, policy and compliance, or testing, or security architecture, et cetera. So across these 12 uh, practices, there are multiple activities that you can do at various degrees. So, so there are some approximately around 80 questions which are there and if you answer each of these questions and it's not just about answering the question it's about somebody really digging deep and validating if you are answering the questions in the right manner so if you can answer those questions or take the help of a third party or even you know, whether the third party is within the organization or outside doesn't matter but a third party neutral view of that and you can assess the maturity of all these 80 um, aspects of application security program you can get your overall application security maturity and using this model you can measure what's your application security maturity is today here is a spider chart which kind of gives you an overview of where you are today but you can also set a goal that this is where i want to be at the end of phase one or phase two etc so on the right hand side you can see a road map you can do a road mapping using OWASP sam and OWASP sam is absolutely open source you can use this and either take the help of a third party or do it in-house and measure your application security program identify the gaps and also build a road map so how do you measure cybersecurity performance? So there are multiple approaches towards measuring cybersecurity performance. 
So there had been this approach for third party vendor risk management where people started sending these questionnaires and vendors responded to that based on that you understand how good or bad they are. But obviously there is an inherent flaw which uh, is that you are relying on data point without validating. So there came a set of companies who said, you know what, we can't rely on these answers to various questions. We need to have a neutral view based on fact, based on indicators and based on data which is available publicly. So we can look into various uh, aspects of data which is available on the internet as well as uh, um, uh, various um, uh, repositories which are available like the spam list you can get the SSL info DNS info you can look into uh, in terms of what kind of data leakage has happened uh, in the pest bin sites etc etc in the uh, dark web so based on all these indicators available you can figure out or give a score of how good or bad that organization security is so this is an outside in perspective or outside in view of your cybersecurity performance. There's also an inside out view and this view is based on assessment of what kind of controls you have, what kind of capabilities do you have and sometimes the outside in view could be deceptive. Like for example if you are using deception as a technology you may put up certain honeypots as an example. There could be certain things which may look vulnerable whereas you may be actually much very very secure or certain cases your internal security may be extremely bad but your uh, exposure or the external um, surface which is connected is uh, is very little and as, as a result what you find on the web could be uh, something which might look good but actually the internal security is very poor or your response capability is very poor so none of these two models are enough by themselves both has its own pros and cons and we believe that it's a good idea to combine both of these use external OSINT based scoring as well as internal capability based maturity scoring so at fire compass we created a cybersecurity portfolio score we tried to simplify you, you saw the intel's model that's very comprehensive we wanted to create something which is slightly simpler which anybody can understand the management can get it very quickly and of course you can drill down to the next level and get into the sub levels and more details so what we have done is we have taken these five capabilities for nist uh, from nist cybersecurity framework which is identification and identification is where you identify your critical systems vulnerabilities so va or pen test is one of the uh, one of the things which you do as a part of identification capability then you have protection mechanisms like firewall etc etc but you just can't protect everything so you need detection as a capability so seam SOC, etc comes there but whatever you do you will get breached and that's something which the industry has kind of realized after several decades that no matter what you do you will get breached so you need to have response as a capability recovery as a capability so what is more important is not security but safety and why i'm telling that is no matter what you do you cannot be secure but it is possible that even if you are insecure your business is still safe and it's that's very very important because the ceo is looking that no matter what happens your business continuity will be intact and you will be able to recover from a breach so that's what's very important so all these five capabilities are super important and these capabilities are applicable across these five entities endpoints applications network data and users so you get like 25 boxes and this is like the entire syllabus for cybersecurity. and based on what kind of capabilities you have what kind of tools technologies processes that you have you have a maturity in each of these boxes most of the cases we have noticed that organizations are heavily invested in protect but they have very little investment in detection response and recovery so having a holistic and a balanced uh, portfolio is what is very important and this is something very important that the more you move towards the right it is more process heavy and more people heavy technology takes like um, uh, if you look at this um, these three aspects people technology and process and how how the dependency on reliance uh, changes across these sectors you will see that most of these things on the right are more people and process heavy so that's at a high level how we uh, cybersecurity portfolio scoring 
So how can you conduct a maturity assessment? So there are multiple ways you can use your internal team um, look into uh, a lot of publicly available data which is there for NIST CSA look into uh, models like what um, uh, Intel has done has released how they use NIST CSF. So that's a great thing. You can study those take those data which is available with uh, OWASP SAM and we can later on share uh, a list of all these publicly available documents which you can use and you can use your internal team to do a self maturity assessment. And sometimes you may want to do a third party assessment where you employ consultants to do this. You can also use products and at fire compass we have started building technologies uh, to do this on a more frequent basis because a lot of things uh, may not deserve uh, that amount of uh, time of yours uh, considering that it is the same old thing which you will have to keep on doing so uh, how can we automate so we'll show you a little bit of that uh, and then we'll address uh, some of the questions which you have so at fire compass we have a tool to do this and i'll spend just two three minutes just showing some of the aspects of the product and maybe some sample report and whether you use fire compass or you want to do internally the concepts uh, are the same so you can very well take these concepts back and do it in-house so here is how a dashboard looks like uh, i'll spend just maybe a few seconds here you can get your overall risk rating overall score you can get the open source intelligence score and like here it is 55 you can see your email security what kind of uh, checks has passed or failed you can just click on this and get the aspects of your web security etc you can You can also have this capability based score where uh, for identify protect detect respond etc you get these scores then you can also get like in this um, uh, aspects from the NIST csf aspect like you can see that for protection uh, what you have implemented and what you have not implemented you can go to detect and see what you have and what you don't have in place so it's fairly easy and if you want to find out which are the products which are there in this space you can just find out all the products Um, those who have seen fire compass uh, this part of the product uh, for discovering and comparing uh, the cyber security products is absolutely free uh, you can also get the portfolio benchmark where you can see what you have and what percentage of peers are also using it you can also see what you don't have and what percentage of peers are using it etc so i was talking about the casby products so here you can see the list of all the Casby products so you can uh, use the same uh, framework or the model to figure out what are the things which you don't have today and discover the right set of solutions for it so that's one part of it we'll move back to the uh, presentation so I'll show you a sample maturity report of how it could look like so we have just a few minutes left so at a high level you can get a maturity score the first uh, row is what is the internal score you can also get a peer benchmarking like in this example 42 percent uh, uh, you are at 42 percent of what your peers are you can get the open source intelligence score uh, this is the portfolio score which you have seen you can see what tech technology you have in place uh, across these sectors what are the ones uh, you have and what percentage of peers have it what you don't have you have the OSINT rating. You can see what's your organizational OSINT rating and what's the rating of the peers based on absolutely publicly available data. So these are various aspects. I'll quickly browse through. This is the NIST CSF, which we spoke about. You have a current score. You see the benchmark score of the various other verticals. Like for example, based on our data, Telco's score around on an average 61 large banks 61 whereas small banks are at 43 and startups and fintech are at eight and you can see how you stack up against your peers then we have the key recommendations and a target maturity score build the roadmap figure out what are the things which you should do etc we also have this OSINT analysis where you can figure out what are what's your exposure on the web what are the things which you don't know um, which are out there online and how do you discover it so 
for example we discover all these dns names the documents which are there online which sometimes organizations are not aware of various domains we discover uh, the various ip addresses um, uh, email addresses mx records ns records etc and sometimes we have noticed that organizations have some um, some of these um, uh, uh, Amazon S3 buckets which are out there in the public which may not be necessary we have sometimes noticed that organizations have some applications online which may not be necessary uh, to be kept they just uh, forgot to bring it down they needed to put it up uh, for some reason for a few days but forgot to bring it down so knowing what is your external shadow it footprint is also something very important so that's at a high level what you can do using open source intelligence as well as capability maturity model frameworks which are available uh, if you have some questions we can uh, take those up uh, this webinar is supposed to be 20 minutes, so I tried to stick to the time and we are sharp at 20 minutes right now. Thank you, Vikash. Uh, there is one question from Natrajan. Wants to know, does security portfolio cover APT security score? That, that's a great question. So, uh, so the way a security portfolio score should be determined, and that's how we do as well, is that it, it, it should it's ne not necessary that you define a score just based on whether it's an advanced attack or a not non-advanced attack the way you have to design the security controls is that whether or not um, it is advanced you should be able to respond to that you should be able to recover from it etc so when it comes to res detection response and recovery a lot of controls are basic so you if you get a level one score as an example in each of these boxes you will be able to probably defend against moderate level attacks whereas if your score is very high if you have uh, uh, more advanced tools to detect much more um, much better capability to respond and recover then you will be able to sustain yourself from advanced attack as well so when typically somebody does uh, uh, scoring it is generally not done against APT as a specific style of attack. Uh, so we also don't do it as an APT specific dashboard or an APT specific scoreboard. What we do is something where all types of attacks, including APT, is covered. But this question is a great question. So suppose you want to measure the capability specifically against APT, then what should you do? So there are a couple of approaches which you can take up. One example could be that you do a threat modeling as an exercise. So that's not cybersecurity scoreboard or maturity assessment. So I would suggest that in that situation, you should do a threat modeling as an exercise. Pick up those um, attack vectors, those APT attack vectors, and enumerate that in those in stages. And for each of those stages, and I don't have those slides right now, I did a talk. Uh, sometime back on this topic um, um, so for each of those stages you need to see do you have controls for that so step one create a list of all those threats and how those attack vectors could um, uh, uh, could be created once you define those attack vectors and how those attacks propagate etc in each of those stages or phases you have to see do you have adequate control or not so that's one way by which you can measure the effectiveness um, from the perspective of apt and secondly if you are doing a maturity model exercise you can specifically request the organization with whom you are working on or maybe do it yourself where you look at the APT specific technologies which are possible and then you do a scoring that what percentage of technologies do you have that's the second way by which you can do that so um, the answer is slightly long um, but I think APT is a complex problem and it deserves a long answer thank you Pukash. Um, there's a question from Azim Hub uh, today's topic is very good but the presentation is very short need more in the presentation so i think azim you can connect to me and then uh, we can yes. discuss the details right so azim thanks for that so we actually uh, try to have two types of um, content or two types of webinar series one is where it is 
uh, one hour long. We sometimes have some community sessions where we have even four hour sessions on a topic. So this specific topic is something which deserves maybe a day because open source intelligence gathering itself is something uh, for which you can have a one day training. Uh, I agree with you, it's short. It was intended to be, as I told before, fast and furious, just a 20 minute uh, webinar. Um, so that you can go back with a new thought. What we will do is we'll follow up with a series of other webinars we, where we will get deep into, like for example, NIST CSF itself is a um, is a uh, is a subject which or, or rather um, a topic uh, which deserves an a one hour discussion. So we can have a very specific um, webinar on NIST CSF. We can have a very specific webinar on OSINT as a subsequent follow up exercise. Okay, great. Zim, I think your question is answered. We'll go to the next question. For benchmarking with peers, which data is considered? Do you have the status? Uh, Swing, NK Swing is asking this. So uh, that's a great question. Uh, in terms of benchmarking, there's not a lot of industry data which is publicly available. In fact, we haven't found uh, much of them. If you find something, you can let us know. We have some data point uh, which we have uh, based on the kind of um, uh, projects which we did. So we have around the data point of 200 plus organizations. So when we do benchmarking, we do it based on our internal data. That is from the internal capability benchmarking. Now, when it comes to external or open source intelligence based benchmarking, all the data is available. So if you are thinking of benchmarking your organization against external uh, OSINT, then you can use the same uh, techniques. There are multiple tools which you can use, uh, like Multigo, et cetera. Uh, but you need to have people who uh, can run those tools. There are more than 200 tools which can be used for OSINT. So you can run those tools to gather data about your organization. And you can also collect public data about your peers. Now, this is something very important that uh, you cannot scan or you cannot run uh, um, NMAP on your competing organization or on your peers because that is illegal. But you can look into those public data without running any scan and collect intelligence. And based on that, you can get a score of yours and you can also get a score of all your peers. So that's a model by which you can do uh benchmarking of yourself against peers and you can either do it in-house uh, buy these tools use these open source tools or you can use third party to do it both the models are possible thank you Bakar. Uh, mohit gupta has a question uh, we are a group of companies and manage federated it in decentralized manner how does a single maturity how can we design a single maturity model or how an aggregated model can be done to get different scores in standardized manner. Okay, so here you can have multiple ways to approach this problem. And I can tell you the problem which I like, uh, the, uh, the approach which I like. So when it comes to the overall capability, if you are entire, all these sub organizations are following exactly the same processes, same uh, set of, I mean, they have this similar maturity. And if you are fairly confident that it is very, very homogeneous, even though it's like distributed across and different entities, etc., then you can have a single uh, maturity score. But generally it is not. And in that case, my suggestion is that you look at each of these entities separately and you can get an open source intelligence based score for these entities separately. And you can create an aggregate score which rolls up and you have an organizational score. And the reason why it is very important to do this scoring separately for each of these organizations is that might be there's an organization which has not uh, uh, which is not ready or prepared to uh, respond to an incident. Their response and recovery program is very weak. Might be another entity has a better response and recovery program. So if you want the information to be uh, to be actionable, and it's not 
about a score i mean what will i do with this score i want to use this score to create actions right which should help me to get better so considering that you need all these entities to have a sub uh, i mean in different scores as an uh, as, as a sub entity and you can roll it up and have a combined score for the overall organization that's how i would probably um, try to solve this okay uh, he sent the thanks his question has been answered uh, Raja Kumar has a question. Does Fire Compass gather data automatically or manual feed is required to know maturity assessment? So uh, we have this platform where you can do it absolutely automatically and it's a self-service model. And what you need to do is just simply say I use these five products and interestingly we have the mapping of more than 2000 products across like for each of these technologies we have like 20 to 40 sub capabilities or what we call taxonomy and based on this data point which we have we can compute the score automatically but there's a huge difference between having something and truly knowing whether it is implemented in the right way so our suggestion is that um, you can probably do this ongoing scoring and maturity assessment on a say monthly basis or quarterly basis in an automated manner which combines both your capability based which is internal scoring as well as open source intelligence based external scoring and OSINT based scoring is fully automated uh, uh, there's a little bit of manual triaging, etc., which is there, uh, but from your side, the experience will be fully automated. But what we suggest is that once in a year, you should probably make it supervised. There should be somebody who is talking to you, understanding whether uh, what you are saying and uh, what is there in the reality, whether there is a gap, whether you meet the best practices of what the rest of the industry or your peers are doing etc so what we suggest is that once in a year you do something which is supervised where um, there's an expert who talks to you and your critical stakeholders and and um, the expert can add uh, the expert insight into the model in the sense you may sometimes like for example um, uh, we have done some of these exercises where i remember in one case an organization said that they have a computer based training for application security so they have a cbt in place that's what one of the stakeholders mentioned the vp of engineering but then we asked um, uh, a few of the uh, developers that do you have computer based training so they said no we don't have so the fact was that they had the training but the guys did not use it so as a result of it what happened was we uh, actually gave a lower score for that factor even though they had the capability in place since the implementation was not uh, perfect we gave a lower score so sometimes having a third party view who looks into it is very useful and we believe that doing that once in a year is uh, good enough and rest of the year you can keep an eye based on what the open source intelligence says and based on um, a self-service model so a combination of both is what is very important Thank you. Uh, because Amrut Purkude has a question, if there are any free tools to measure this thing, uh, please let me know. Great question. So there are free, okay, there are a lot of free tools and there are a lot of free frameworks. Huh? So you can use both. Like for example, if you want to check how prepared are you for GDPR, and if you just give a Google search, you'll find a lot of those tools which are there available. So then so basically you have many of these free tools which are very use case specific you will find some of those tools and i think that's a very good start you can start with those but for measuring overall cyber security maturity i am not aware of any free tool as such which is there today if somebody finds it uh, we would invite uh, them to just uh, share it in your blog tweet it as well as just mail it to us we have a community and we'd love to share it there uh, but there are a lot of free frameworks. So even though I don't know of a tool, there's a way to handle this. That is uh, for NIST CSF, if you want to use that as a model, I would suggest that just go to NIST, download those uh, things which you have. Along with that, I would just suggest read the document which Intel released on how they uh, use NIST. I think if you do these two things, you will be able to go back and use it within your organization. So that's strategy one. Strategy two, if you are suppose uh, um, working on figuring out your application security maturity model, just look into OWASP SAM 
and you can do that um, uh, by taking all the documents which was sam has so there are a lot of these frameworks which are available which you can use for free but in terms of a tool i don't know of uh, right now uh, but all these uh, frameworks are as good as how you use it so if you have the right kind of competence within the organization that's great um, or else you have to get people who are expert in this domain Thanks, Vikash. Uh, next question by Farhat Digbit. Some risk scoring products consider hacker threat analysis result and breaches as binary, such as if it is there, then the risk score should be highest. Do you think that's a good strategy? So, Pritha, may I just request you to repeat it once? Sure. So, some risk scoring products consider hacker threat analysis result and breaches as binary such as if there is a risk score um, sorry such as if it is there then the risk score should be highest is this a good strategy uh, i think what he's trying to say is if there is a hacker threat analysis uh, if there's a hacker threat uh, there then the risk score is considered to be highest so okay so i probably did not uh, understand the question fully uh, in terms of what do you mean by a hacker threat because all organizations will have threats from hackers right so that is there so uh, in case you mean to say that um, there are open vulnerabilities in that case i would look at do you have critical vulnerabilities there are many ways by which you can uh, define the levels so if you have a critical open vulnerability which exposes your crown jewels in terms of the critical data then that becomes very very uh, important to be fixed now uh, whether it should be i also heard the word binary uh, whether it is binary or not i would say things are not binary always um, i mean things are slightly fuzzy because it's a real world and in real world things are not binary but it is a good idea to treat things as binary if you want to be paranoid if you are paranoid you will treat things binary but truly speaking the world is not binary the world is fuzzy now uh, where do i then have binary thinking and where do i have fuzzy thinking so i would go for binary thinking if it is related to my crown jewels and i would go for fuzzy thinking if it is not a crown jewel so i tried attempted to answer your question without understanding it totally well so i may if i may just request uh, we can probably get in touch with you separately and if we could either have a chat or try to address it over email sure Farad, why don't you drop us an email and we could take this forward i think because the questions are done um, wonderful so thanks uh, thanks a lot there's a lot of questions i mean i'm very happy to hear so many questions we had a 20 minute webinar and 20 minute questions <laughs> so i think this topic deserves a longer webinar and we will follow it up with probably two separate webinars one on delving deep into nist csf and one on delving deep into open source intelligence collection so thanks thanks everybody for joining us today